This is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, split level home in East Meadow, which would now go for around, I don't know, seven or eight. This is actually the inside of the house, believe it or not. And it's a story that amazed me, being that I am in that line of work. Uh, it involves a serial squatter who has, and we're going through, as you see how the neighborhood uh, looks of East Meadow. A serial squatter who has avoided paying the mortgage on his home for 23 years. He was finally evicted. Um, after, uh, you know, uh, finally evicted in September of 2021, after a judge ruled he is not covered by COVID protections. The individual who was 52 years old, he was living in the home free of any mortgage payment, just made one mortgage payment, the very first one, for over 20 years. And again, uh, lost his last battle, and that's the end of the road after he does not qualify for covert protections because he is a illegal squatter and not a renter. So three different owners have tried to kick out uh, the original homeowner from the home since he was foreclosed upon by Washington Mutual in 2000. Now, if you're not familiar with the, with the process, when a home is foreclosed upon, sometimes the original owner is there, sometimes they moved out. Uh, so you're, you're taking a chance. If you're buying a property that's foreclosed, you always ask if the original owner is living there. If he is living there, then it's your responsibility to get him out. That's why the home is usually bought or sold by the bank at a extreme discount. And sometimes it works. Sometimes you get the owner out. Other times you won't. But the original, and so this has gone through three different owners already. And none of them have been able to get him out. He has managed to avoid eviction numerous times. By drowning each of the three owners in legal actions and preventing the court's uh, rules to his favor. Every, the court is ruling in his favor, believe it or not. The protections of the COVID declaration would adhere to tenants, but not to those who have no financial obligation. He added, people who stay in foreclosed homes illegally could be considered occupants at sufferance, if not outright squatters. The judge said that his behavior uh, reflects no payments of any kind for decades. And it uh, strongly, it's any protection is against him since he has not made any payments. For years, what has he done with the money? Obviously, saved it or spent it towards other uh, needs. And that ruling was a good news for um, the real estate firm, which is the third owner now. Uh, and they've been trying to uh, boot the original owner actively. Now, the original owner bought the house. For two hundred and ninety thousand in nineteen ninety-eight, his mortgage payment at that time, with taxes and insurance, principal and interest, before defaulting was sixteen hundred dollars. Sixteen. So now imagine if he would have stayed making payments, he would have been done paying his mortgage in what five or six years. Had he obviously not refinanced or anything of that nature. The original foreclosure agency, Washington Mutual, they tried to kick him out in 2000, but he filed two bankruptcy claims in 2001 
Then he filed another two in 2002 and one in 2003. Now, how you're able to file so many bankruptcies, it's something else that's unclear. So Chase took over Washington Mutual's assets, including that East Meadow home. They tried to evict him, but he filed three lawsuits against Chase. Now, when Diamond Ridge, the real estate firm, which is the third owner, when they bought the home from Chase in 2008, the company had offered the original owner $20,000 to leave. $20,000 to leave. He refused the offer, forcing the third owner, which was a real estate firm, again, to continue running a legal tab of over $150,000. firm was also forced to pay at least $50,000 back due in property taxes. The original owner used every single loophole in the book, from hiring lawyers at the last minute, and to legal action. Then you had the COVID-19 pandemic, which clogged New York's house, uh, you know, housing courts because of a rule banning landlords from evicting tenants, which was designated to protect people who had lost their jobs because of the pandemic shutdowns. Now, he continued to live in the house by leveraging using the uh, bankruptcy code's automatic stay rules, which give debitors a temporarily reprieve from all collection efforts, harassments, and foreclosures. The house, uh, in September of 2021, was listed on Zillow with a pending status, meaning the seller and buyer agreed to a deal, but the sale hasn't closed yet. In this case, because the original owner hasn't, not, has not left. The listing at that point was for three hundred ninety-nine thousand. Remember, these homes go for seven or eight now. So, imagine all of that. Imagine. And what? And to make matters worse, what this individual had done, the original owner, he was subleasing it. Subleasing it, meaning. On a one-family home, he was renting out the home to um, to tenants while living in that home. The second left onto Kenmore Street. So he was collecting rental income on a property that you should not be collecting rental income on, being that you live there, <laughs> and um, still not paying anything to the bank at all at all just one payment just one payment and now this was as of September of 2021 you see that the home was sold for look at the home now the renovation um, is completely uh, the home is renovated looks completely different um, it's a corner house big property I would probably tell you this home has around, it looks like around 2,600, 2,700 square feet. Man, but 20 some odd years. Just one mortgage payment. You know, and uh, Wamus selling the house to Chase didn't help either. You know how some people play it off. That's not who I got my mortgage for, yada, yada, yada. So that clogged everything up as well. But found this story interesting, had to share. Hope all is well.